So what's the best way to get a government job? Is it endlessly applying on usajobs.gov? It could be, but if you were to ask me, if a random person walked up to me and asked me that question, I would say you need to look at the recent student graduate pathway. That way enables so many people that come out of college or come out of university and they could have a two year associate degree, a bachelor's, a master's, or even a certificate. If you want it done even quicker, you can just focus on a 12 month, one year certification program and you have that preference. You have it for up to two years. So if you graduated with a certificate, January, 2023, you have that preference until January of 2025. There are hundreds of these type of positions that the general public cannot even compete for. Government employees, they can't even compete for them because they're solely there for the students and the recent graduates. I myself personally have helped people get into the government at the GS7 or the GS9 level. They had no to limited experience and I was able to help them get in. So they went from making minimum wage to earning 45, 55, $60,000 a year. Now, if you're a veteran, this time can be extended from two years to six years. The next thing I would say is to grow your network. And I know what you might be thinking, that's something that is used in the private sector, but you can also use it in the public sector. You can use it for a government job. And the reason is pretty simple, because if you know the hiring manager, or you know somebody who knows the hiring manager, that can work to your advantage. Now, you still have to get past HR. So you have to get past the referred list, the best qualified list, because the hiring manager cannot really influence anything until you're showing up to interview. At that point, the hiring manager can say, I like this person. So up until then, you still need to have that strong resume. The next thing I would say is look at the open to public job announcements. There's over 10,000 of these jobs and anybody can apply for them, provided that you're a US citizen. If you're a US citizen, no matter where you live in the country, you can start applying for these type of jobs. And there's no limit. It's not just you have to apply once or twice, you can apply five, six times if you want it. If you want it that bad, if you really want to get in, you can apply as much as you want every day. This is also where most people start because if you do not qualify for the dozens of special hiring paths, you're left with this option. Next, if you served in the military, there is veterans preference. You can look at the veterans special hiring path. If you haven't served in the military, serving in the military for three years or so is a good way to get this type of preference. But do not get confused, it is still difficult to get a job. Simply because you're a veteran, because you wore the uniform, they will not automatically hire you for any positions. It is not that easy and every day, there are thousands of veterans that are struggling and frustrated trying to get a government job. And it's almost like a myth to think that you have to be a veteran in order to get into the government because yes, it will give you preference, but take a step back and look at the entire government. Only 25% are actually veterans. Out of the 2.1 million employees, only 25% are veterans. Next, I would suggest looking at the federal law enforcement agencies, and I'm talking about CIA, FBI, DEA, ATF, those type of agencies, because there's a structured hiring path where there, it's almost like a funnel. You apply and you go through this rigid structure in order to attain employment. It's not the same as when you're applying for like an administrative type position at the Department of Agriculture or something like that. When you are applying to get into one of these type of federal law enforcement agencies, a lot of people have experienced that it takes a little bit longer to get in because the background check is a little bit more comprehensive. They dig deeper into your background so you could be left waiting for a year sometimes even longer, depending on the agency, depending on how the security team, if they're backed up or not. But the best advice that I could give somebody is to do two things. The first thing, focus and double down on your resume. Look at it, improve it, have someone else look at it. Send it to a friend, send it to one of, the, one of your friends that might be a federal employee already. Have somebody critique it, improve upon it. Never stop approving upon it. The second thing is to apply, apply, apply. Do not get emotionally attached to any job announcement. You really want a job. Let's say at the DEA, you wanna be a special agent. You really want that job. So you apply and it's on your mind. You can't turn your mind off. You wanna follow it, track it. Where is it? Should I send an email? Let me call somebody. Let me get on the forms. Let me figure this thing out. You will emotionally drain yourself if you become too attached to any one job announcement. 
Understand there's many jobs out there that you can qualify for. You watching me right now, I guarantee there's many jobs you qualify for. So do not get all hung up on that one. Keep applying, make it a process. Come up with your own schedule four times a day, five times a day, whatever you can manage, three times a day, and be methodical with it. You almost have to be like a computer. You apply, you forget, start over again. You apply, you forget, you start over again. It's just like that. And eventually, if you have that strong resume, you will have multiple job offers coming in, not just one or two. You will be flooded with job offers, and you will have the choice on which one benefits you the most. Whatever way you get started, you have to ask yourself this question first. How much are you worth? And I'm talking about salary, I'm talking about GS grade, because once you get that job offer that you accept and you start earning that paycheck and the taxes come out and the insurance comes out and the investments come out and you're looking at it, you could be telling yourself, hey, this isn't what I signed up for. This paycheck is too low. Maybe I should have aimed higher and tried to get a GS-12 or a GS-13. So you want a firm understanding on what's an adequate salary and exactly how much are you worth. And if you want help figuring out that question, then I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.